What's up wellness people? Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Today I am answering a question that came through from somebody who is looking to transition into plant-based living. And the question they asked me was, how do I sneak more greens and vegetables into my diet without, you know, getting sick of them? So, you know, eating too many smoothies or, or salads or stir fries, because as we know, those are the sort of quintessential plant-based uh, meals that we go to. So that is what today's call is all about. So um, the first thing I want to mention here is that it's important to ask ourselves a question first and foremost, and I'm, I'm going to ask you. So when I say vegan meal or vegan diet or plant-based diet, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Now, for a lot of people, and I've asked this question so frequently over the past 10 years that the general answer I get is stir fries or salads, and they always seem very, you know, not substantial or sort of boring or overdone in a way. And I'd like to break that paradigm because there is so much more to plant-based food than just salads, smoothies, and stir fries. So... Um, you know, it's important to understand that you can absolutely sneak more vegetables into any single meal. So whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, a snack, or even dessert. Yep. You heard me. I said dessert. You can absolutely find ways to sneak more veggies into that. So I am going to discuss that a little bit further in this call. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that I am putting together a really comprehensive guide. This guide is the ultimate plant-based pantry guide with more than a hundred ingredients that are going to completely transform the way that you cook so that you can have access to gourmet plant-based meals from the comfort of your own home. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please let me know in the comment section, or you can slide me a DM and I'm more than happy to get that copy to you as soon as it is ready. And, um, without further ado, let's jump into the call. So how to sneak more veggies into your diet when you're sick of eating the same thing again and again and again. I'm going to just start by ripping the bandaid off and saying that the only way to eat more veggies is to eat more veggies. There's no magic pill. There's no magic powder and there's no magic spell that's going to make you have more vegetables in your diet other than simply eating them. So if you're finding that you are getting bored and you're eating the same thing over and over again, the most important thing to do is to start exploring different types of veggies, different types of foods so that you're not getting so bored all the time. My top tip for doing that, which I've talked about in many other wellness Wednesdays and, and different um, videos, the top tip would be to aim to eat seasonally. So see what is available, what's local, what's fresh, and that's going to help you to rotate your diet so that you're not getting sick of the same foods again and again and again. So some people who know me, I can see two people on the call here who know me. Um, they know me as the silent green. So I am a big fan of putting greens on absolutely everything that I eat. And that is the basis for any single meal. So, and I'm talking anything. So, you know, rather than thinking of it as a salad, we can look at this in another light. Let's say that you really want some comfort food and you're looking for like a mac and cheese or something, and you want a vegan mac and cheese, but you still know it's high carb and maybe you don't want to just eat it and then feel guilty for not getting your greens in there. You can just start out with a bed of greens in your bowl and then put some macaroni on top of it. Same thing for veggie burgers. And I'm talking more like, um, you know, store-bought veggie burgers, like beyond meat and those types of foods. Those are not necessarily healthy. Yes, they're vegetarian and that's really great, but I would not go as far as calling them healthy. So how can you amplify the health of something when you just want to eat a burger? Maybe you're going to a barbecue or a potluck. You can, you know, skip the bun and then instead start with a bed of greens. You'd be surprised how satiating it is to have a veggie burger, especially something so hearty like that on greens. And if you still want to have a bun, I say, go for it. Just load up the side with, instead of fries, go for salad. And that's a really great way that you're going to help to offset some of the negative effects of eating that much sodium and that much, um, like fat and, and, and everything. Let's say that you want something like poutine. So we all love poutine here in Montreal, Montreal, uh, represent Quebec. <laughs> and if you want to have a poutine, I, I would say the best thing to do is again, start with a bed of greens. All you need to do is lay a bed of greens underneath of there. And then you have your poutine with your gravy and your vegan cheese or whatever it is. And voila, you've just all of a sudden amplified something that is typically known as unhealthy and made it a little bit healthier for you. 
Um, some other ways that you can start to sneak some greens and veggies in there would be to add something like spirulina or some sort of greens powder to, uh, to dressings and dips. So even something like a hummus. If you wanna make a hummus, all you need to do is put some spirulina in there. When you blend it, it's going to be a green hummus. Depending on how much you put in there, it could be a little bit like bitter or you know green tasting, but you could just put a little bit, give it some color, and you're still getting tons of nutrients from that. Same thing with salad dressings. You can make all sorts of delicious dressings. Just put a teaspoon or even a tablespoon if you're feeling hardcore that day into um, your dressing and then blend it up and you've got a lovely green dressing. Spirulina is also great just in water. So if you're the kind of person who feels like, oh, I don't really wanna put a bed of greens under my mac and cheese, I just want mac and cheese. I don't recommend doing that, but let's say that that's who you are. That's totally fine. What you could do is just have a glass of water. All you need is this much water with some spirulina, shoot it back. You don't have to sit through drinking a whole tall glass of something if you don't like the flavor. So that's another way that you can just get some greens into you. And then the last part that I wanna talk about in this section is that you sometimes wanna think outside the box. So if you're thinking, oh man, I need more vegetables, I need more, greens in my diet, there are so many more nutrients found in other plant-based foods that are not necessarily green. So let's talk about, you know, chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, you know, even like coconut is a really, really high quality fat. You can look at so many different ways that you can top off um, whatever meal you're having. So let's say you're having oats in the morning. You can always put goji berries on top of the oats. Those are going to be packed full of nutrients and antioxidants. For those of you who don't know, antioxidants are the, the way that we offset the um, oxidization or the way that we offset toxicity. So if you're eating lots of um, like sugars and lots of processed foods, or let's say that you even are outside all of the time in a city and you're breathing in a lot of carbon monoxide from cars, that's a form of toxicity in the body. So antioxidants help to um, counter any of the negative side effects that happen in that way, which is why superfoods are so super. So um, thinking outside of the box and looking at foods that aren't green per se, but they're still packed full of nutrients, that's gonna be a really great way to get it in. All right, so hopping into the next point here. Um, exploring some new recipes. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this call, many people think of vegan food and it immediately go to like rabbit food, which is really unfortunate. You know, we think of salads and stir fries and that's like as far as the mind can really go. I want to give you not only permission, but I want to encourage you to play around with some traditional recipes like, um, you know, eggplant Parmesan or something. You can turn that into a delicious, highly nutritious, vegan version of eggplant parmesan. You can do the same thing with curries. You can do the same thing with um, muffins. You know, you can do chocolate zucchini cake or chocolate beet muffins. And it's amazing how much, how many beets or how much zucchini you can fit into something that just tastes like a chocolate delicious dessert. So that's a really great, great way that you can start to revamp or, you know, like uh, plant basify. I don't know didn't really think of a word ahead of time, um, some meals that are more traditional and that are traditionally not so healthy. You know, same thing with like a mousse. If you're, if you're feeling like you want a pudding or, you know, something for a dessert, you could do an avocado chocolate mousse or avocado mousse with different fruits in them. Um, you could even make some banana ice cream. Banana ice cream is one of my favorite summertime go-tos when I'm just feeling like I want a sweet treat. You could do sorbets from home with fresh strawberries or even frozen strawberries, raspberries. The, the options are seriously limitless. So we just need to start to rethink these traditional dishes that normally bring us comfort and see how we can amplify them. How can we make them better simply by adding some more nutrients into them? So this is a really fun game to play and it doesn't always work out. I just tried banana pancakes yesterday without a recipe. They did not work, but you know, they're all right. It's interesting to play around because then you start to learn what you do and don't like. You start to realize what's gonna take too much time, what's not gonna take time, Yentl's laughing. <laughs> Yeah, they were terrible. I wouldn't try that again, but you know, different recipe next time. <laughs> so redefining uh, the way that we look at foods. So the last point that I want to make here, the final point about sneaking greens into your diet is that we need to look at changing our mindset because at the foundation of everything, our mindset is everything. So if you're the person who's asking, how do I fit more greens, more veggies into my diet? Then I have to ask you a question, which is what's the resistance? Why are you feeling like putting more vegetables in your diet feels like a burden? Is that your belief system or is that a belief system that we've been indoctrinated with for generations? Many of us grew up in a society or in a culture where 
every meal revolves around a piece of meat and that meat is the main part of the dish. And then we have, you know, like a starchy vegetable like potatoes or rice or something like that. And then maybe a side salad. And that's if when you finish your, the rest of your meal, you have space for the salad. So we need to look at reorganizing the way that our thoughts work around food. So if you're asking yourself, how do I fit more veggies into my diet? I think the question is, how do you not fit more vegetables into your diet? And I know that can feel challenging. And if you're finding that you're getting like a little bit more frustrated that I'm saying something like that, then that's okay. And I welcome that frustration because it's showing that there is something within you that is being challenged maybe. And that's a really good thing. It's good to challenge our belief systems and ask where they came from. Is that my belief system? And does it actually bring me health? Does it bring me towards my goals in life? And if not, then we get the opportunity to change them, which is so much fun. So, um, you know, very much a, a large part of the, the North American culture and even, you know, all cultures throughout the world, a lot of cultures do focus on having meat primarily, and then they'll go to veggies afterwards. And so let's flip the script a little bit here. Let's say that, you know, now we start to look at a plate of food and instead of thinking that you start with meat, you're going to start with vegetables. If you're not eating meat, fantastic. In this case, it's actually not going to apply to you. And I'll talk about that a little bit after this question came from somebody who's looking to transition, which is why I'm, I'm implying this here. So, um, when you're picturing a plate of food, you're going to start instead with half of that plate. So 50% of the plate is going to be non starchy vegetables. So starchy vegetables are like potatoes and rice and grains, pretty much any grains. Those don't count in the 50%. 50% of the plate is going to be made up of non starchy veg and not grains. So that's going to be a really great place to start. And then from there you get to play around with the difference, the ratios, right? Now you get to add some, some, uh, you know, some healthy fats, something like avocado, if you want to, or maybe maybe a dressing that's made with like uh, olive oil or truffle oil or something. Um, then you're also going to have maybe a grain. The grain isn't necessary. I know some people out there don't eat grains and that's totally fine. Another alternative could be, um, you know, a starchy veg if you wanted to do that. So like potatoes, you could also do something like cauliflower or cruciferous vegetables. They're not high in starch. They are really fantastic though. And then if you're a meat eater, that's where you can think about adding the meat or Hey, fun challenge. Try not adding the meat at all and see how you feel. I hear a lot of people say that when they started eating plant-based, they're like, I'm always hungry. And personally, I don't see a problem in that because I love food. And if you're here, I'm going to assume that you also love food. So, you know, if you're finding that you're still feeling hungry, then this is where you start to play around with the ratios. Maybe you add, you know, instead of a quarter of an avocado, a half of an avocado, maybe you do add that grain, like some quinoa or um, something on the side. Maybe you have like a bigger portion of black beans or, or lentils or something that's going to help to satiate you and make you feel more full. And don't be afraid to play with those adornments. As I mentioned before, like your chia seeds, your nuts, your hemp, all of those types of foods that are going to help to bring a more holistic, antioxidant packed, nutritious, delicious plant-based meal. Hell yeah. So recap, the recap here is that you want to put greens on everything, including, and especially your comfort foods. So just add a bed of greens, throw some sprouts on there. If you're making a salad dressing or a dressing or a sauce, add some spirulina if you want to. Bullet number two here is that you want to explore traditional recipes in a plant-based way. So, you know, if you're making a chocolate cake, try a chocolate zucchini or a chocolate beet, try an avocado mousse or a banana ice cream or a fresh sorbet. And then point number three is to change your mind because ultimately that is going to be the biggest tool that anyone can ever offer you is a perspective shift that maybe we don't actually need to eat meat in our diet. And maybe that's a belief system that's been passed onto us from somebody who did believe that. And if you are looking on the path of plant-based living and you're, you're having a hard time and you're feeling bored, then this is, this is your sign right here. If you're looking for a sign, if you're looking for permission to explore something and to say that you don't need meat in your diet, this is that moment. So a couple of action steps, because you know, I love action. Um, again, I'm going to rip off a bandaid, just do the thing. Do the thing. If you're having a hard time and you're struggling with eating more vegetables, usually when we have a hard time doing something, it's because we need to spend more time on that thing. So if you're finding that you're getting bored or you're having a hard time, just do it, do it more, 
put yourself in a situation where you are going to do it next time you're at the grocery store start in the produce section next time you're cooking a meal start with the vegetable and then branch out from there and then maybe commit to yourself if you are still eating meat at this point in your life then commit to yourself that you are going to do like one to maybe three days a week that are t entirely plant-based and then that's a really fantastic start you're not a, you're not only going to be adding so much more nutrients so much more health to your body you're going to be contributing to the planet on such a grand scale with just one or two or three days a week for those of you who are plant-based or who have been plant-based for a while and you're still struggling with variation variety then opt for more seasonal foods when you go to the grocery store when you go to the farmer's market see what is available fresh plump looking good, juicy, delicious, and focus on that. And then hit up Pinterest. Y'all know I love Pinterest. Hit up Pinterest and be like, what do I do with an eggplant? Or what do I do with a yucca? Fill in the blank with whatever other vegetables you can find there. All right, so that is it for today's call. I do see a question, how to get outside of the matrix through nutrition. Oh. <laughs> Nice, Rafa. <laughs> and um, yeah, so new site is launching on July 13th, which is so awesome, so exciting. There's so much amazing content in there. Everything from articles on health, all of the health articles that I have got, uh, that I've written and, and putting on there are backed by science. They are evidence-based. They go deep into the what, the why, the how of plant-based nutrition. On top of that, there's a ton of great recipes that are there and there's going to be more to come in the future. So that's always really fun. Don't worry, not the banana pancakes. I have left those off for now until I've mastered that recipe. <laughs> and then as I mentioned at the beginning of this, um, of this call, I've got a, uh, a new um, the ultimate guide for you. So one of the major things I get a lot of questions about is that, you know, like, how do I know, or what are the macros? How much protein is in hemp seeds? Or, you know, how much, how, how do I use nutritional yeast? So questions like this about food. And to be honest, I studied food science, not specific food. Every bit of knowledge I have about the foods and how to use them in gourmet plant-based cooking comes from my experience. And so I want to empower you by offering you the tools that have helped me to understand how to use these foods to maximize the health benefits of a plant-based diet. So as I was typing and writing up all of the ingredients that I find are so beneficial to have in my pantry i stopped counting at 96 there's definitely over a hundred ingredients in there that are so phenomenal um, and so i'm gonna not only leave you with the ingredients list but also a little tidbit on how to use them and some of the benefits that are most commonly understood about that food group so if that's interesting to you awesome it is currently in the making so in the next I'm going to say 10 days or so because I know it takes me some time to do the editing and put it into a proper format for you guys. So by the time that we launch on July 13th, that will be available. If that's something that sounds good to you, please let me know. You can let me know in the comments below. You can send me a DM. You can, you know, whatever. It all sounds good. Or you can check out my website and download it from there. That's always fun too. Anyways, y'all. Um, oh, I see one question here. So you mentioned spirulina. Um, earlier, where do you recommend to purchase it? That's a great question. So I usually will get my spirulina from a health food store. Most health food stores have them, um, like Rachel Berry here in, in uh, Montreal. I think Tao, Tau, like Tau um, they have them there as well. And I'm sure you can probably find them at some of the more conventional, you know, like Provigo uh, in, in their health food section. I'm sure they would have something like that. I've also seen them on Amazon. Um, Amazon has some great brands on there if you want to shop around on there. And then one of my friends, um, uh, his, his company is called Alchemy Taste. He's based out of BC and he has an amazing company where he puts together an entire antioxidant green blend. It's got moringa, spirulina, and a bunch of other really great nutrients. So it's a little bit more robust. It's very tasty. Like it's not going to be as bitter as, uh, as just spirulina is plain so that's another really great one as well and that's alchemy taste he can find him on netflix you can find his website or netflix uh, not on netflix you can find him on instagram that's the one um, or you can check out his website and you can shop on there as well he's super friendly his name is daniel and i definitely recommend it that's one of my top go-to ingredients as well cool anyways y'all I hope you have a really blessed day. Happy Canada Day, all my Canadian friends out there. And I will check you later. <laughs>